I'm Sarah Green and I'm a forest pathologist with Forest Research um, based uh, near Edinburgh at the Northern Research Station and I'm going to talk about a fairly new problem we have noticed on Scots Pine which is now widespread across Scotland um, and it's a fungus called Coreopithiophylla which acts in association with an adelgid insect um, to cause damage to Scots Pine. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at infected Scots pine trees, um, showing you what the infestations look like, so how to spot it, and then um, if you find it in your woodland we'll talk about what, what can you do about it and how to report it. So we're here at a site in southwest Scotland where we've got some young Scots pine. Um, the tree to the left has the infestations of Coreopithiophylla with the adelgid. Um, it appears as, uh, it almost looks like a lichen, but it's a black stroma. The fungus forms what we call a st black stroma, so fungal material that completely encircles the shoots and branches and sometimes the main stems of trees. The fungus is only ever found in association with the immature stage of the Scot common Scots pine adelgid, um, Pineus pinei. And the adelgid is found underneath the stroma and is feeding on the tree tissues. So um, I will talk, can talk a bit more about that in detail later. But I just want to show you, I mean, this Scots pine tree is obviously, it's not the best growing tree. And it is quite heavily infested with stroma, particularly on the lower branches. So it appears to start in the lower part of the crown. And we believe that it... Um, causes a progressive dieback from the lower crown upwards. Um, you can see this little tree on the right hand side here, the small one is obviously weak and suppressed and it is absolutely covered in this stroma. Obviously you've got lichens, the pale green, but the black underneath the lichen is the fungal stroma with the adelgid underneath. And behind it you've got a much more vigorously growing Scots pine tree which isn't yet infested. So if you want to find the uh, infestations, the best place to start is the lower part of the crown of young trees. And you'll often see the blackening at shoot junctions, uh, for example, here. And so you've got the black stroma, which can sometimes be very tiny little stroma that are just five to 10 millimeters in length on shoots or you might find them even extending to five centimetres, sometimes even more up to 10 centimetres on branches and shoots. Um, the most common places for the stroma to occur are at uh, shoot and branch junctions, um, because we think that's where the adelgid insect would start feeding, and then the fungus basically grows over the adelgid and starts the colonies off. So, um, what you can see if you get a knife and you peel away the stroma, you can peel it off, you can see it's quite white underneath and if you had a hand lens you'd be able to see the little pink uh, bodies of the adelgid at the very margins of the stroma. So the adelgid needs live branches to feed on and when the flow in, in the tissues have been killed underneath the colonies, underneath the infestation. The adelgid dies off, the stroma dies off and drops off, and then you get a secondary fungus, which is again another very common wound infecting pathogen of Scots pine called Crumenulopsis sororia. And that fungus then causes these cankers to form. So you'll see these often these blackened sort of burst open cankers. They're very black and sometimes the other side of the shoot can have a kind of flattened appearance. Um, and this is the, what we think is the second stage of the um, disease. Of the, so it starts with an infestation of courier with adelgid. And then once that drops off, the wound is then infected by Crumenulopsis, which causes these cankers which expand year on year. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a, what we call one of the secondary cankers that is a result of the original courier adelgid infestation. So the courier is no longer present, that fungus is gone, the adelgid is gone, but the original wound site where the adelgid had been feeding here has now been colonised by a fungus, Chromenulopsis sororia, 
which causes these black cankers which expand year on year. You can see another canker forming here. This would have, again almost certainly have been a, an original point of infection of in Korea with adelgids. Again these cankers are most likely to be found at branch junctions. Yeah, so the question that we're being asked is, is this a new thing? Um, so just a reminder, we've got three agents involved here. We've got this Curia pythiophylla fungus, uh, which associates with the adelgid. And then we've got secondary infections by a fungus called uh, Cremenulopsis. So the adelgid and Cremenulopsis are very long-standing associates of Scots pine. They've been around for a very long time. They're very widespread and we know quite a lot about it. The fungus Curia pythiophylla, which appears to almost farm the adelgid, um, has been reported very occasionally um, in there's been a couple of records in the UK previously, but only about three or four, dating back to 1874. There's been the occasional record on other conifer species in Europe and in North America and also in Asia. But the fungus has remained very obscure. Um, it was actually a lot, it's hard to, to find about, out about it in the literature. So um, what we seem to be seeing is um, a sudden kind of explosion if you like of, of this fungus over the perhaps the last 10 to 15 years possibly a bit longer uh, particularly across Scotland uh, and we're not sure why that's happened because we've had previous outbreaks but they've been more localized and they've obviously died off for reasons that we don't know so we don't know how related our fungus is to the fungi that caused the previous outbreaks. So we don't know if we're dealing with potentially something that has been introduced or whether things like wetter winter, warmer wetter winters that have occurred over Scot in Scotland over the last 20, 30 years, whether that has helped to precipitate it. So we simply don't know these things. But what we are interested in is knowing uh, how widespread uh, it, you know where it occurs in Scotland and particularly also in England in Wales and even in Northern Ireland so we're looking for new records so if you think you see it in your woodland um, you can go to the Forest Research Tree Alert uh, web page and you can report your finding through Tree Alert um, what we need is photographs good quality photographs which are then submitted into Tree Alert and then someone will get back to you if um, a sample is required. So, um, of course, we're being asked questions as to what the future is for Scots Pine. Is this something that's going to be very significant in the future? Um, yes, we think it is uh, certainly already uh, significant in that it is causing this lower crown dieback, particularly on younger Scots pine stands that are planted on poorer sites, so sites that aren't that suited to Scots pine. Um, but it doesn't appear to be a killer of trees. Um, so if your pine is planted on a good site and it's growing well, we wouldn't think at this stage that it would be too problematic. Um, so what we're asking managers to do is if you're planting trees, that you source your trees from locally grown material, so it has to, the provenance is matched to the site, that you source your trees from a nursery that operates a very high biosecurity standards, preferably one that is also certified with one of the certification schemes, for example, Plant Healthy Certification Scheme. We definitely recommend that. And above all, that you plant Scots pine on a site that is suited to Scots pine. And you can use the Forest Research Ecological Site Classification tool to assess the site suitability. But what you want is good, locally adapted, vigorous trees that are growing well that should not be as susceptible to this, to this problem. Yes, yeah, so well, I hope you found this uh, video informative um, and useful and we look forward to perhaps seeing some new reports uh, through our tree alert. <laughs>